If you punch this into your graphics calculator, you will get what's called a cycloid. You will trace out this path. You will trace out this path, and this path here is called a cycloid. So let me demonstrate this. Hang on. So, uh, so punch this into your graphics calculator, and you're, you're, you're trying to keep track of one particular point on that circle. So if you press play, it, it will trace out this, uh, this path. Well, that path there is called a cycloid. You can, uh, you can slide it back and forth. Well, punch it into your graphics calculator and play around with it. You will get what's called a cycloid. And, and the equation, the parametric equation for this path is given by this. And we've seen this in the past. So if you don't understand this, track back to one of the earlier videos. The parametric equations will be given by this. Okay? Well, turn this cycloid up, upside down and you will get this. So I've zoomed in as well. Now imagine you putting some sort of marble or some sort of bead or some sort of particle on, on this frictionless path. So because it's frictionless, it's going to fall all the way down here and then it's going to rise right up to the top because it's frictionless. So now, um, so, so, so we are going to try and find the, um, the time it takes to, uh, to travel from here to the highest, from, from the origin to the lowest point here. Well, as it turns out that the cycloid it's actually the fastest time that will um, that that the marble can fall from here to uh, to here. It is the fastest time. You could argue that why not take the, the shortest route? You could argue that why not take the shortest route? Well, the shortest route here, you can see that the gain in speed is very low, whereas here because it's it's steep, gravity will will um, will give it a lot more speed. It, it will gain it will gain it will gain uh, in speed a lot faster than. Than if, if you were to take the uh, the quickest route, you could you could um, you could exaggerate this. Hang on. So hang on. Bear with me. So uh, so let's say something like this. You can see that along this path, you can see that the gaining speed. Hopefully, your gut instinct will tell you that the the gaining speed here is going to be very low in comparison to something like this, because here it's, it's a lot steeper. So so gravity will will give it a lot more speed. The gaining speed will be a lot. A, a lot higher than than if you were to take this path. You could you could argue why not take it all really steep? You know? Why not why not create a path that's really steep and then really shallow down here? Well, yes, it, it will gain in speed, but then but then by the time it gets down here, it will be really slow. So as it turns out that this path here is actually the shortest time because it's the shortest time because it's the shortest time. We we said that the the cycloid is this thing here, which I can't pronounce. We said that the cycloid is this thing here, brachistochrome. I, I can't really pronounce this. Um, so, so the quickest path is actually, as it turns out, it's, it's a cycloid. And the, the thing about this cycloid is that, let, let's say the time it takes, let, let's say A, point A, point B, the time it takes to travel along here, let's call it T1, T1. Well, if you um, if you were to put the bead anywhere along here, let's let's just say here, it, it will still be the time it takes to do uh, to travel from here from here to here is still t1. If you uh, if you put it here, the time it takes to, to get to here is still t1. If you put it if you put the particle right here, the time it takes to to travel from here to here is still t1. So no matter where you put it, the um, the time will always be the same because because the time will always be the same no matter where you put it. We say that the cy the cycloid is this thing here, which I can't pronounce either. Told what well, I can't pronounce it. So 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 this this cycloid here is special in that um, in that it is the uh, the the the, uh, the quickest route to try. It is, it is a path that that will be the quickest to get from A to B and and also. Um, it's it's special because no matter where you put the B, the time it takes to get to here will always be the same. If you put it here, it's still T1. If you put it here, the time it takes to get to here is still T1. Up here, it's still T1. So so it's kind of special in, in that um, in that it is both this and this. Um, the 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 main question here is how do we know that this is the quickest um, the quickest route the quickest path. Um, how do we know that this is the only one? As it turns out, it is the only path that is that there isn't a um, a, a quicker or there isn't a, another same time path. 
So how do we know that this here is not the same? Well, anyway, you need to um, you need to study a branch of there's, there's a branch of mathematics, calculus of variations. That would then well, well this is beyond our scope at the moment. Um, we um, well, if you wanna if you wanna find out all the solutions, or if there if there doesn't exist another solution, then you have to do this branch of mathematics. Well, for the time being, for the time being, we are only going to investigate um, the time it takes to travel from here to here, or from here to here. We are just going to look at the time. We are just going to look at this and not this. This this is this is about discovering the path, the quickest path. This here is looking at the time because we we are now going to look at this. So I will continue in the next video.